Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Starfleet Academy Let's Play. This is episode 6 and we're going to do mission 8 today. Uh, maybe mission 9, you never know. It really depends, as always, how much time each mission takes. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Cadet's log. Despite my best efforts, Robin continues to isolate himself and it's really hurting his performance. Corrin's grades are still low, and this morning I was called into Rothro's office. Enter! Cadet, I understand you have a busy and full schedule, but that does not account for your performance in the simulator. I expect much better from you and your crew. Yes, sir. Have you seen Corrin's ratings for this simulation? No, sir. Corrin's ratings have improved dramatically. But there's still an issue with Cadet Brady's performance. I'll talk to Robin about it, sir. Good. Robin is technically proficient, but has trouble meshing with the team. Additional study won't improve his scores. He needs to feel comfortable as a member of your team. Sir, what happens if Robin's scores don't improve? The only way Cadet Brady's scores won't improve is if he can't handle the simulator. His class works fine. It's your job to make sure he does well in the simulator. Dismissed. McGee, what are you doing here? David, I am Dismissed, not going to- Dismissed, Cadet! Yes, sir! Cadet's log, supplemental. I'm worried about McGee, but until I get a chance to talk to her, there's really nothing I can do. Hello, David. Faith Gage. Oh, yes, Faith. How are you doing? Good. Uh, do you mind if I sit? No, go ahead. Thank you. I'm glad I have a chance to talk to you. You know, Corrin talks a lot about you. Well, I'm glad you came by. Okay. Um, good to see Sulu again. Uh, you know, the one thing that really distracted me in that scene uh, was uh, in the right-hand side behind Forrester, there were three... Um, things on the wall there was a klingon disruptor there was a tos phaser and then a motion picture era phaser i just that struck me as kind of interesting that they would have weapons displayed like that on the walls of a starfleet commodore's office it just seemed a little like is that what you want to display but to be fair we know that kirk was obviously a uh, fond of antiques and in his personal uh, home he had uh, I think muskets in the background and things like that I, I have no problem with that or anything like that but it just it just struck me as a, a little bit of an odd thing to uh, to display on your wall in Starfleet Academy um, but yeah no, anyway let's let's get on with this so um, that's Faith and we know that Robin's really into her and that Corin's really into her so once again, getting into the love lives of our crewmates. But Robin, we don't need to talk about Corin because, as Sulu said, Corin's grades have improved. But we do need to talk about Robin. So. I wanted to talk to you, actually, about one of my crew, Robin Brady. Yeah. Are you two. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have him in a few of my classes, but. Um... Other than engineering, he doesn't seem to have many other interests. Well, he's pulled his head out of a Jeffrey's tube long enough to develop a crush on you. <laughs> yeah. He's a nice kid, but um, I couldn't possibly be interested in someone whose whole life is dilithium matrices. Yeah, I know. I, um, I've been trying to get him out more. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions? Well, yeah, why doesn't he join one of the groups on campus? David, have you been watching the news? No, what? Rother has been repeating the announcement We've every five given minutes. We've official confirmation that the Federation colony on Bicea was destroyed two days ago by unknown forces. There are no survivors. McGee had relatives on Bicea, didn't she? Your mom lived on that planet. Mm -hmm. They better give her some leave time. Well, Bicea was one of the disputed worlds, wasn't it? Right along the Klingon neutral zone? Correct. Mm -hmm. Before the Organian peace treaty, both the Federation and the Klingon Empire had a claim to Bicea. Oh, Mangia, you must feel so awful. Far. Magia, I'm sorry. Thank you, David. All of you for your concern. 
We can put our missions on hold during your leave of absence. That won't be necessary. As your captain, I could order you to take some time off. You would be exceeding your authority. Mikio. I am going to study now. Wait a minute. Fascinating. Cadet's log, supplemental. Now what am I gonna do? Cadet's log. Despite her recent loss, Magia came through just fine in the last sim. So I guess Starfleet knows best. Although I'm still very worried about her. On the other hand, Robin's scores continue to drop. Enter. Robin. Come on in, have a seat. David, you want to talk to me? Okay, Skylon cutscene. Uh, again, like I noticed in the the last uh, Let's Play Mission, uh, the sound effects. Uh, so in um, earlier in the uh, Commodore's office, uh, I noticed that was a Defiant door sound. And then just now, that was a DS9 door sound. So they're really grabbing different sounds from different eras here. It, it's not a real complaint for anything. I, I just have an ear for these things. Uh, yeah, okay, so potentially the Klingons have wiped out a colony. This is not simulated, now this is some real stuff, so we're getting some, some more drums. Uh, for, I'm sorry for using the word drums, I do apologise. Some more drama. Uh, so that's going to be something else we have to factor into the group. I have to say that um, I, I like this uh, aspect of the game where you have to manage your crew. I mean, obviously this is one of the game we're trying to be a... a uh, a captain, but it, it's really nice that there's a lot of this aspect of managing your crew, a lot more than I actually remember there being. Um, so yeah, it, it's cool. I, I love this aspect of things. So, But to the issue at hand, Robin, thanks for coming. I want to talk to you about your scores. Robin, I want to talk to you about the team. Huh. I think either are kind of valid, but as Sulu said, it's not just about the scores, it's about the team, you know. Uh, you, you can do the best in the simulator, but if you're not meshing with the team, then your scores aren't going to improve, are they? Um, also, side note, Faith is like, no, I'm not going to date a nerd. But anyway, um, so yeah, let's talk to him about the team. Robin, I want to talk to you about the team. I thought everything was going okay. Oh, it is, it is. But uh, I want you to spend more time with the team outside the simulator. <laughs> do I have to? <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, again, trying to go for the scores, but we, we really want to try and integrate him into the team. So let's, let's try the whole friendly route. Robin, we just, we want your company. At least come to our poker games. I never know what to say to the others. You know, I, I can kind of sympathize as being that guy back in the day, uh, never knowing what to say. Um, but... <sighs> yeah. I, I personally, having been sort of in that kind of shoes, I would possibly just respond better to this than I would respond to just, you know, kind of you'll never know if you don't try sort of thing. As opposed to, you don't have to worry about saying anything, just just be there, just participate. You don't have to do things, so limit the pressure. Whereas the first one puts more pressure on you to participate and get involved. So, coming from my own perspective here, I think the second one's better. Don't worry about saying anything. The rest of them can talk enough for the both of us. How am I supposed to get anything done if I'm socializing? What? Am I supposed to stay out all night like Corrin does? You gotta find a balance. Just like Corrin. I don't... I don't like socializing. I like... Transporter matrices. Matter to energy conversions. The new replicator theories. Robin, the best place for you to learn all about that is here. I'm not sure I'll ever fit in. Look, if you leave the academy, you'll never know how, how good you could have been, how far you could have gone. That's not fair, this is easy for you. You fit in, everybody likes you. Everybody really likes you. You must have noticed by now that I don't fit in. Robin, Robin, sit down, okay? 
It's really hard on me. I was just thinking this guy really reminds me of Barclay, uh, Lieutenant Barclay in uh, TNG Voyager. Um, the, the awkward guy who's brilliant but just doesn't know how to sort of interact with people. Um, what have we got? Look, that's just like that. You aren't going to make it. You need to find a way. No, that's that's not right. We really need to try to get into try to get to connect with the guy. I mean, yeah. If you weren't in like Starfleet or you had some, uh, you know, just just a just regular Joe, you whatever, then it's okay to just, you know, it's your choice not to socialize more. But you are joining Starfleet. You have to work as a team. That It's something you have to do. So, you know, you do have to get used to it, but there's still, this is the right way to approach it, I think. That's why you need to socialize more. Look, the only way to fit in is to go into that lounge and face them. I'll try, David. I'll try and socialize more. Great. And then maybe we can talk about some of those replicator theories you're working on, huh? I'd like that. Look, I'll, I'll see you in the lounge, okay? Thanks, David. Cadet's log, supplemental. You know, just when you think you're handling a problem, another appears. This time, it was by Sia again. The Klingon Empire had nothing to do with the loss of the Bicea colony. However, there is bitter justice in the colony's failure. The Federation should never have put fragile Andorians and humans on such a hostile world. Only Klingons could have tamed Bicea. Liar! What about the energy readings on Bicea? Didn't they show Klingon disruptors destroyed the colony? The trace energy on Bicea was similar to the patterns made by Klingon disruptors. But that does not conclusively prove Klingon involvement. Oh, so was all those other races on the Klingon border that used disruptors. Why are you defending the Klingons, Durek? Though I regret your personal loss, I must point out that Bicea was not a particularly important colony, nor was it strategically placed. It is illogical to assume that the Klingons would start a war in a world that would gain them so little. Well, isn't that just like a Vulcan? Using logic to deny the obvious. Face it, Milan. You've lost this argument. We need to change the Federation's whole approach toward the Klingons. I, I think I don't, didn't mention it last time, but that guy has a really punchable face, which I suppose is why he was hired. This, he, he's the punchable face dickhead uh, antagonistically going for humans first, basically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everything is setting this up to be, yeah, this could be the Klingons. Um, but the Klingons aren't exactly one for subterfuge. If they destroyed it, the Klingons would admit that they did it. It's just not the Klingon way to destroy something and then deny they did it. The Klingons would just say, yeah, we did it, and they would do it for a reason. Sturrock obviously also, by logically going, uh, well, you know, what's the value in attacking a planet that has no strategic value for the Klingons? The Klingons uh, do think strategically, at least uh, as far as, um, at least we will learn this in Klingon Academy, how uh, they teach their students. Now, the Romulans, on the other hand, they would totally do this. And Romulan weaponry, they use disruptors as well as the Klingons. Not a far stretch to uh, imagine that the Romulans did this and blamed the Klingons in order to start a war between the Federation and the Klingons. So, whilst it may not be the Romulans, it's uh, most likely not the Klingons who did this. Uh, but it's, it's very, it would be very easy to assume that, it, that this uh, was the Klingons who did this. But anyway. Uh, let's respond to Mr. Punchable Face Guy. Um, I don't think he has an interesting point. I think he's just uh, leaning into his biases of, uh, yeah, fuck the Klingons. And also notice how he uh, dissed the Vulcan way of thinking as well. So very, very human-centric point of view. Human first. So let's go with this one. How? By going to war? Look, the attack on Bicea was an act of war. 
We cannot let it go unpunished. If you ask me, the Vanguard is the right answer. The Vanguard? What's that? It is a group that is as tired as you are of the Federation's response to outside threats. The Vanguard says it's time for humans to take care of humans. I see. And what about all the other races that are a part of the Federation? That's just what I'm talking about. <laughs> How? How is that just what you're talking about? You're, you're very much putting humans first. Uh, I'm guessing the argument he's going to make there is that, well, all the aliens that are part of the Federation are fine because they're, they're passive, they don't hurt us, and we basically have some form of control over them. You know, um, it's the ones we can't control, the more aggressive ones that we should basically kick the crap out of. Yeah. So... I would not say that. I would just say that the Vanguard's aims would be to change the aims of the Federation and basically turn it more like into the Dominion, where the founder, like the founders, the founders want to control everything that is not them. Only they matter, and the Vanguard would basically have a similar approach. Only humans matter, everyone else does not matter, as long as you conform to what we want. So we'll go for the top one. What's that supposed to mean? The races inside the Federation already live the right way. It's the races outside of the Federation that are the problem. Well, I better be going. I got a Xeno psych class. See you later, Milan. Sounds fascinating. Sounds frightening. They might be possibly just what the Federation needs. Well, look, I don't know what the Federation needs, but I need a drink. Here, here. <laughs> Okay, that was by far the longest cutscenes uh, of stuff to deal with. That's great. I do like that. Um, Magia, obviously, very interested in the Vanguard, which is understandable, given she just apparently lost a family member. Uh, in times of fear and anger and isolation, it's very easy to be swayed by an argument which uh, directs your anger and hatred towards uh, your current biases. We've seen it in lots of fiction. We see it in real life. Um, so, yeah, very understandable. So, yeah. All good so far. Did I mention I'm really enjoying this game so far? Uh, it, certainly compared to DS9 Harbinger, where I was just pulling my hair out in boredom and occasional frustration. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to do a quick save here. Uh, we've already gone through 20 minutes of stuff, so I'm pretty sure this is just going to be a single mission we're doing today. Crew, 92, 91, and... Brady was 71 last time and I was 90 last time so I've gone up 2% and Brady's gone up 3% so things are looking good McGear, McGear's dropped nastily but understand what just happened alright let's see what we're going to be doing next welcome cadets we're conducting an experiment in the Alpha Hercule system using charged tachyon particles to increase the efficiency of a conventional warp drive. We set up the USS Hawking, an Oberth-class vessel, to perform the experiment, and we will need you to observe at close range and perform data analysis. That is all. Good luck. Captain's log, stardate 3173.4. traveling to the Alpha Hercule system to observe an engineering experiment that is being conducted aboard the USS Hawking. Everything appears routine. Course laid in, Captain. I would bet anything that the writers deliberately uh, added the word vessel just so Chekhov could go Wessel. You know it, I know it. That's what happened. Anyway, nice to see Chekhov again. So, uh, let's do our damage control stuff quickly. Uh, yes, two shields. Let's get a whole life support. Um, I'm going to go this route. Weapons. I'm not too bothered about the rest right now. I guess uh, a bit more to warp and leave it at that. That'll do. Alright. Uh, so I guess we will 
go to the system. Entering Alpha Hercule system. The experiment will begin when we get close to the USS Hawking. Okay, let's get close to the Hawking. A no birth class vessel. We are now in range. The experiment can begin. Initial tachyon burst. Dispersion at 10 million tachyons per cubic meter. 29. 39. Okay. Faces have been hit. Uh, red alert. Being held by the bird of prey, okay. Frequency open. The Klingon Empire will not permit you to create another Project Genesis. We have the right to defend ourselves. Leave the system now, or be destroyed. The coward didn't even give us a chance to respond. Yeah, I mean, they started firing at us first before hailing. I mean, whatever. Okay, so he's cloaked right now. Um, so yeah, that was weird. The the ship clo cloned itself. That's actually a, a power up in uh, Star Trek Armada. You can clone a ship. Phases are on. I wonder if that's where they got it from. Fire on your orders. Port side shields repaired. Here's the Klingon. Lower shields down to fifty percent. He's cloaked again. Bastard. How's the Hawkings? Nothing unusual to report. Forward shields have been hit. Shields have been damaged, Captain. Support is critical. The object is too fast a tractor, Captain. Too fast a tractor. Okay. Support system offline. We can't use tractor beams unless we're. Attacked. My crews are working as fast as we can. Can't use tractor beams to green alert. Okay, interesting. I just assumed you could use a tractor beam whenever you like. Anyway, uh, port shields down. Ventral shields down. Shields online. This bird of prey is giving me a bit more trouble than I'd like. Yeah. He did. Upper shields repaired. Forward shields on. Where is he? Hello, mister. You fucked. What happened back there? The disruption split the ship into two parts, Captain. We must get the other Tempest back here and use the Tachyon device to reunite ourselves. The Tachyon burst has weakened our structural integrity. Unless we're reunited, both ships will be destroyed. Captain, the other Tempest warped to the Dante system. But why? I think I can guess. Six years ago, my Uncle Alan was killed in a skirmish with the Klingons in that system. I'm sorry, David. <sighs> Uncle Alan died commanding the USS Essex. He'd always come back every year or two and tell me stories and, and give me stuff that he picked up in all the systems he went to. I guess he's one of the reasons I'm going into Starfleet. When he died, I was mad. I, I was mad enough to kill. And when Dante was awarded to the Klingons, I got even madder. Now I've gotten over it, but... You still have those emotions in your subconscious, Captain. And the commander of the duplicate ship may be driven by your subconscious. Course laid in, Captain. Okay, um... Kind of weird that we didn't have the cutscene directly on the captain's face, it was just a blank view screen, because we did see the captain briefly, or Forrester briefly, and then suddenly 
blank screen of sorts. So a little weird, since considering the game has so far gone to a lot of effort to show us even uh, very small cutscenes of ship captains going, "We're waiting for your order, sir," or whatever. Lower shields repaired. So yeah, interesting. This mission, however, although it's very uh, you know Star Trekky bullshit with its tech, all of suddenly duplicating ship, duplicating everything. It's not unknown in Star Trek. I love these little artifacts. Um, uh, it's a very Starfleet Academy style mission. Uh, you know, peeking into your psyche, your your fears, and interesting to to really test you. We've seen this in, uh, in action before. Uh, Wesley Crusher is a good example of that. Uh, testing his fears. So yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we're just kind of fixing our shit. Life support. Um, I'm going to guess that we're probably going to have to fight our duplicate. Uh, so uh, I will probably have to remind myself to switch to disabling phases. Oh, there's uh, emergency power again. We'll just have to... I think we don't need to wait too long for life support. So let's let's go find our duplicate. System online. Entering the Dante system. Captain, the Tempest is heading towards Dante 2. Are they firing at the planet? Let's, let's hail our duplicate. Hi, Davy. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it when you get your evil counterpart. They just ham it up. We don't have much time. We've got to get back to Alpha Hercule and get ourselves back together. Look, you imposter, I order you to surrender immediately. Uh, no, I think the first one's much better. Oh, sorry, Davy, but I don't care about you or my own survival. There's something I have to do, and I'll either do it or I'll die. Isn't that what Starfleet's all about, the success of the mission? By the way, Vanda. If he hasn't told you that you're incredibly attractive, then I will. That's all. Bye, Dave. Wow. Okay. Let's, uh, let's disable. This is the first Starfleet on Starfleet combat we've had. It's not quite the Reliant versus the Enterprise. Although I seem to remember, is is that a mission we do at some point? I feel like it is. Shields have been hit. Upper shields down to fifty percent. Upper shields are at critical, sir. Port side shields repaired. We have the tempest in our tractors. Course laid in, Captain. Up support at fifty percent. Upper shields online. Okay, I I just completely wrecked its torpedo launcher and uh, uh, was it port nacelle? Forward shields repaired. We've completed repairs. On the I don't know why I was. I felt like I had to keep going down to keep it in. Uh... Our counterpart has been disabled, Captain. Okay, yeah. I kept doing this because I felt like it was moving down, and I'm just kind of doing that myself. So, all right, we disabled him. USS Tempest one eight five two. Cool. Ready to fire on your orders. Well, let's do it. Entering Alpha Hercule system. Can we hail him again? No response, Captain. And what about the Hawking? Hawking is currently unmanned. Okay. Starting the tachyon pulse procedure. Well, let's hope this works. I've had enough of a split personality as it is. Constitution complete. Our structural integrity is now normal. Wasn't that recombining process just a little too easy, Mr. Sturk? It's only a simulation, Jeff. I think I need to have a long talk with Chekhov about this one. Course laid in, Captain. Okay, well, that was a pretty easy mission overall, so let's go back to the Starbase. Oh, 
That was a bit weird on the audio. Sound like the warp uh, deceleration went a bit too quickly there. Okay, so uh, mission complete. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Permission to speak freely, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Forrester. Why... Why did you take things that were personal and use it against me? Because, Mr. Forrester, we're trying to prepare you for what's out there. The unknown. There are things in space that will do everything they can to turn you into an emotional cripple. And if we have to tear open all wounds and rub a little salt in, we'll do it. Yes, sir. Don't worry, son. You did well. Just remember, we can't prepare you for everything. But we can certainly try. Dismissed. Cool. Yeah, nice little mission. I I'm also really enjoying the... Uh... The number of cutscenes we're getting is quite impressive, and uh, they're pretty well done, especially for the time. So yeah, let's just save. Yes, overwrite. Okay, uh, I think this is like a 35-40 minute thing. I'm going to cut this off here because I, I, sus if it, I suspect uh, it's going to take at least another 20-30 minutes. And I'm really trying to keep these episodes down to sort of the between the 30 to 50 minute range. So yeah, so that next time we'll be doing mission eight, um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't really have too much else to add to that one. Um, I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to say about it. Uh, so hopefully uh, the next mission will also be uh, of interest, relatively uh, speaking, and maybe we'll, we'll be advancing the plot of uh, Bicea and seeing what happened there. Maybe we'll see Mr. Punchable Face, Punchy Face. I'm gonna call him Mr. Punchy Face. Uh, that, that works for me instead of Milan or Milan, whatever he was called. So yeah, do join me next time uh, for that episode. And until then, do take care.